Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com. Today talking with you about time and quantum indeterminacy, as well as focusing on this book, The Order of Time, by physicist Carlo Rovelli. And this is a book that starts off by blasting apart some of the assumptions that a lot of us have about time, specifically things like, um, he wraps it up at the end, what the assumptions were. I'm just going to the last section here. Yeah, we... Right, we have the idea that there exists throughout the cosmos a process, a now, that constitutes reality. The past for everyone is fixed, is gone, having already happened, right? The future is open, yet to be determined. Reality flows from the past through the present toward the future, and the evolution of things between past and future is intrinsically asymmetrical. This, we thought, is the basic structure of the world. Um, he does blast this apart in the first section of the book, um, really getting into some of the things I like best about um, this idea uh, that, that some people really do know about, that time doesn't move consistently. It, we can measure it with clocks, certainly, but it's time itself is moving faster at different elevations on the planet, as well as completely differently in different places in the cosmos. So that tells us right from the very get-go that time is not this steady, measurable thing that's quantifiable and predictable in that sense that there is even such a thing as now, everywhere, at the same time. There is not. And a lot has to do with the locations of where we are. And um, also, reality itself seems to be based mostly on what we remember. So this really gets into consciousness. This book is a real trip. It's so cool. And it gets into some of the ideas that... We've taken for granted with Newtonian physics and even Einsteinian um, ideas of relativity um, that are just approximations, basically, is what Ravelli is telling us. Ravelli starts there, and then he gets into this idea of quantum indeterminacy. Now, this is where I particularly love this book, because in addition to his idea that there might be such a thing as a quantum of time, getting into that very tiniest, most indivisible element of time itself, he points out um, that it's really important that we think about how our cosmos might be running on entropy, not energy. And we tend to learn the physics of energy when we study it in college, like I did. Very seldom do we hear about anything else. Ravelli is saying, let's take a look at entropy. Let's look at the way uh, when we eat food, we're eating lower entropy substance. And that's, we tend to run forward, and um, that's the arrow of time, basically, that we're uh, going, we're taking things that had that lower entropy to power up and energize ourselves. Uh, according to Ravelli, there's no such thing as an energy crisis because it's just, um, we're looking at it wrong. <laughs> we need to look at the entropy. So, okay, but that's not my favorite thing. The thing I like so much is where Ravelli writes, the intrinsic quantum indeterminacy of things produces a blurring like Boltzmann's blurring, which ensures, contrary to what classic physics seems to indicate, that the unpredictability of the world is maintained even if it were possible to measure everything that were measurable. I love that, because that's what I've been noticing, too, um, quite a bit when I've written the paper I wrote about uh, primacy of quantum logic in the natural world. That's the one. If you've read it, you can get all the papers that I've contributed. Um, they're free on my website. You can actually just type in like CynthiaLarson.com and it goes right to my about page on Reality Shifters and right down there you can see the links to the articles. Uh, but in this paper, I'm documenting evidence from the fields of cognitive science and quantum information theory both, as well as a lot of physicists who are taking ideas about quantum logic. What is it? And... Um, how does that all operate? So one of the things that I think is super cool that I quote in that paper is a quote by Robert Speckens, a physicist, where he says, this suggests that one would obtain a better analogy with quantum theory if states of complete knowledge were somehow impossible to achieve. That is, if somehow maximal knowledge was always incomplete knowledge. In fact, the toy theory suggests that the restriction on knowledge should take a particular form, namely that one's knowledge be quantitatively equal to one's ignorance in a state of maximal knowledge. Okay, that sounds a bit weird, right? 
you think that the more you know about something, the more you know. And basically, Speckens is saying that's not the way the quantum reality actually operates. Um, there are lots of things we don't know. There's sort of this implicit uncertainty. And that's important. And that's super cool. Because when we've got that uncertainty, we don't need to start thinking that we have to know everything or have it all pinned down. There, the quantum reality that I think is the more of the universal set, certainly, than classical reality, that quantum reality is amazing because it's giving us permission at every moment to experience miracles, basically. The science of miracles is this idea of quantum jumping. And Lao Tzu had an observation, which I think is quite great to point out, and I wrap up my paper with this quote, the more you know, the less you understand. And that might seem fatalistic. I don't think so. I think it's just an, a constant enticement to get to know more. Because as we're moving, as Ravelli would point out, we are moving from these states of uh, uh, you know, lower entropy into higher entropy. So if that's happening, then of course it's going to be more complicated as we're going through time, because that's the nature of time. And so there's less that we understand, but there's more to be excited about learning about. And that's my approach as a quantum optimist, to keep encouraging all of us to ask, how good can it get? So I'll keep doing that, and I hope you do too. And until next time, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com, where I do have a free monthly newsletter. You can keep up with all the information and the news articles, the um, videos like this one, as well as things that I'm doing with International Mandela Effect Conference, um, with lots of other people on their channels. So all of the links are included in each month's update, and lots of cool Mandela Effect stories and first-hand reports of reality shifts. Thanks so much for watching. This is Cynthia Sue Larson again with RealityShifters.com. And remember to keep trying out variations. How good can it get? Take care.